Good afternoon, my fellow scientists. It is Thursday, September 14th, 2017, and I want to talk to you about biosensors. The original biosensor is the glucometer, the diabetic glucometer that measures blood glucose for diabetics. And it is a really amazing little technology, the textbook example of how biosensors function. I'm going to go through the super old, old version. Lots of improvements have been made since. Uh, this was <laughs> the state of the art, but this is just the absolute nuts and bolts basic of how to build a biosensor. And strangely enough, it's pretty closely related to how batteries work. So let's get into that. So I'm going to give you the short, short, simple version of how a glucometer works. If you're not familiar, it's this little device has a screen and it reads out 152, and that's actually in milligrams per deciliter. But it all comes down to this little test strip that takes a tiny little bit of blood. And you've probably seen these if you know anyone who's diabetic. And you've seen them do a little finger prick and then add a little bit of blood to this strip and it gives them a number. So how does this work? It turns out all the action isn't in this device. All the action is actually in the strip. So these strips work on a three electrode system where you have what's called a reference electrode, a working electrode, and a counter electrode. And it's kind of hard to understand just how all these work because they each serve a different role. In the simplest terms, you have your reference electrode, which is one half of the galvanic cell. And then on the other side of the battery, so to speak, you have both your working and your counter electrode. And the reason you need to set it up like this is because you want to put your voltmeter like this, because we don't want to change the voltage by passing current through this little cell, this battery. And then you have a separate circuit that measures current through the other side. So essentially by separating those two from one another, the current and the voltage, you can avoid making the battery system change, which of course changes the measurement. But it's easier to think of this as a really big battery <laughs> that can accept both current and voltage. That isn't how it's set up, but it sort of works out that way. And if you think of it this way, where there's this battery that has silver, silver chloride on one side and an unknown on the other, you can kind of imagine that the amount of voltage and current is going to depend entirely on the chemistry over here. So if you change the chemistry by, say, adding hydrogen peroxide, then the voltage and the current will change accordingly. But how can you add hydrogen peroxide? Well, it turns out there's a little enzyme that very specifically recognizes glucose and changes into waste, and it produces one molecule of hydrogen peroxide. So what we have here is an enzyme, actually a bioengineered enzyme at this point, that is really the workhorse of this measurement. It's that enzyme that specifically grabs glucose and makes hydrogen peroxide. And all of this is just a way to detect the hydrogen peroxide. So we went from having this big device, we went from having this handheld glucometer to having a tiny test strip. And inside that we have these one nanometer enzymes that are really the business end of this detector. So for me, I think that's pretty interesting. So if you like that kind of thing, learning about biosensors, learning about batteries, learning about chemistry, tune in Monday through Friday. We update every weekday and talk about all that kind of stuff, including how to build some of these things right here in the Allen Lab.